Well, no, y'all don't remember. I call the Via del Corso, I call it the fashion district here in Rome because it has nothing but designers, top tier, has all kinds of stores over here. And remember I told you guys I was gonna make a video on the fashion? Well, I can show you a little bit about, show you guys some outfits and how they wear that way. So when y'all come visit here, y'all will know. Ciao, girls. So I just wanted to start posting videos talking about the fashion in dis different countries. So I wanna start traveling and, you know, come back and give you guys a good intake on what I learned about the fashion there and just like tell you how it is. I made this video specifically for my girlfriends that wanna know Italian fashion, or I guess I can say like Rome, or maybe you're just into fashion and curious to know how the Romans dress. So prior to this trip, I was scrolling through Pinterest and I was on the Vogue app looking at Fashion Week in Europe. I was looking up YouTube videos on what to wear because I really wanted to fit the aesthetic there. But even though like we may have an eye for fashion, I just needed to get, you know, a couple of tips. Up to me, in my opinion, Italians are very fashionable. And from my experience, appearance and style is very important there. So girl, I'm going to give you five tips slash things that I learned about the fashion in Italy. So if you are interested in learning, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video. This is gonna be a vlog of my last day in Italy. So number one, this is something that I learned, and I guess you can say it's a tip as well, but I noticed that Italians love blazers, or I guess I can say Rome in Rome, but they love blazers, and girl, when I say love, I mean love in all caps. I saw so many women wearing blazers with their fits, so knowing me, I did my research before I came, and I packed about two blazers. Now, I already have blazers in my closet, but you know, I was glad that I actually brought on a trip, because normally, you know, I'm going on vacation, I wouldn't think to bring it, you know? So then again, in my opinion, I feel like blazers are a staple item that you need in your closet. It really can elevate your look. It can be very versatile and you can dress it up or down. And then also a bonus tip with that is stockings. Stockings was something that I saw a lot in Italy and I can tell that it's very popular. And honestly, I think it's popular in Europe itself. So I saw a lot of girls wear them with shorts, skirts, rumpers, almost everything. And mind you, in April, that's when I went to Italy, the weather was really bipolar. So it was hot during the day and then it was cold in the morning. So that plays a huge factor into why they was wearing stockings, I believe. So this is a cute piece that you can throw inside your suitcase as well. Tip number two is sneakers is definitely a go-to. So I saw a lot of women in cocktail dresses and skirts and then when you look at their feet they have some good old sneakers i rarely saw anybody in sandals or flip-flops i think that it really goes beyond fashion i think it's more so because rome is a walking city i would say italy is a walking country in my opinion the roads are gravel so flat shoes aren't really going to cut it and also if you're a tourist it's best for you to even wear comfortable shoes because you will be doing a lot of sightseeing and you really wouldn't want to need a taxi unless like wherever you're trying to go is like 20 minutes away walking distance so um it's really recommended that you even wear sneakers but i will also recommend you not wearing your favorite sneakers because they will eventually get dirty and also on the fashion side i think it's really cute to um throw on some sneakers with an outfit because as girls we're always prone to throwing some sandals on with a dress and so i saw a lot of new balances I saw Nikes, I saw really different type of brands. I even saw Asics, you guys. Don't be afraid to throw a sneaker on with your outfit. Like, there's no rules. Okay, 
So the third thing that I learned about Italy's fashion is that timeless pieces is the T. Minimalist and classiness is what I learned there. Italy focuses less on trends and more on staple pieces that never go out of style. So a great example of some timeless pieces that you can own is like a classic trench coat or maybe like a little black dress or some black pumps or a denim jacket, you know, or a blazer, which is what I mentioned earlier. Those are timeless pieces. Those are pieces that don't go out of style. They're not something that's seasonal. There's a sense of classiness that Italians bring to the table. So that is something that I do love. And I think that something that you can do um, if you do like trendy pieces, because there's nothing wrong with it, because I do have a few trendy pieces myself. What you can do is you can take um, a timeless item out of your closet and you can maybe throw on a trendy item as well. So tip number four is being conservative. Sometimes, not all the time. This is a sometimes thing. So Italy is predominantly Catholic. So there's many churches and there are even some popular tourist spots. There are churches, places like the Vatican City and the Pantheon and others ask that you follow a certain dress code just out of respect. And I remember when I went to the Pantheon, there was a girl, she was walking and she was wearing a spaghetti strap tank top. And there was a lady that asked her to please cover up her shoulders. And also, when I visit the Vatican, many people were dressed appropriately. And of course, that makes sense because, you know, the Vatican is Catholic. That's where the Pope is. So there is a certain sense that you do need to be respectful. So booty shorts, bralettes, see-through clothing is a no-no. That's just my opinion. You don't have to just, you know, be covered up everywhere you go. Because um, that's why I said um, only conservative sometimes, not all the time. Last but not least, girls, you do not have to be designer down, okay? I know that Italy, or as we know, Milan, Italy is known for an epic fashion week. And however, you do not have to be designer down. Do not feel pressured into buying expensive clothing when you visit this beautiful country. Just a fun fact, you do not have to have on a $100 or a $1,000 shirt, pants, or shoes to be considered fashionable. That is not what make you fashionable. A person that's fashionable can throw on anything. It doesn't have to be something that's expensive from Louis Vuitton or Versace or Burberry. That is not what make fashion fashion. And personally, this is my opinion, I think that that's, that's where there's a difference between Europe in America, I feel like that there's a sense that people feel like because I have on some Gucci shoes and I got on a Gucci outfit that that means that I am fashionable. That does not mean that you are fashionable. I think that fashion tells a story. Um, it, it, it's your personality. It's a way that you can express yourself. So I think that you don't have to break your bank just to look a certain way in Italy. And I think that's just beautiful that's what makes europe different you know what i mean i watch so many videos and i see what they wear because you know i love fashion and i watch a lot of videos and it's people that walk around and they ask them what they're wearing and i always hear them say the same thing i always hear them say they have on a hand-me-down that they got from the grandmother or the grandfather or they went thrifting something that's vintage like they don't always have on a million dollars on their bodies And most importantly, girls, the point of me making this video is just for fun. I loved studying the Italian fashion and I just wanted to share with y'all, especially Italy, which is, in my opinion, one of the fashion capitals. Uh, my dream is to go to Milan. My dream is to go to Fashion Week in Milan, even if I don't have to go in a fashion show. I just get to be there. So that is something that I dream to do. But overall, if you are traveling there soon, just be authentically yourself because at the end of the day, there's no rules to fashion. 
I think that's what makes Europe different. There is individuality. People are their own selves. They don't have to, you know, follow what everybody else is wearing. They follow what they think is cute, what makes them feel good. And I just think that's what's just more important. So therefore, do you... Guys, look at all this pasta. Look at this. Guys. They have pasta everywhere. Guys, look at this. Does this look so good? Oh my god. Okay guys, so we're still walking around. We were just walking around the fashion district, I would say. It's called Via del Corso. That's exactly what it's called. And different streets have different names, but I just call it the fashion district because it's way easier for me to do that. But I did show you guys some of the outfits here. Hopefully you got a good feel of what the Romans wear, okay? At least I got a good idea of what they wear here. So hopefully you did too by watching this video. Oh, you guys, this is where we're at. This is our second time coming here. And it is so good. So good. Start your computations. my last meal in Italy well Rome Italy and I got the clam I got the spaghetti with the clams and I tried it with my sister the other day and it was so good so I had to get it myself so yes hey guys so it is the end of the day. Yeah, so we're back at the hotel. This is our last night here. My flight leaves tomorrow at 11.25. I mean, I feel like I'm satisfied with the whole trip, you know? I feel like if you come, I feel like you should be here for maybe a good three or four days. And then maybe city hop to Florence or Venice because after a certain amount of days, we kind of like ran out of stuff to do. But I was still soaking in the experience because I, I was, I'm in Italy, like when a lot of people can't say that. So I appreciated every moment. So it was still good, but yeah. Also, I forgot, I went back to the Pantheon and I got a sandwich. I got a panini from this iconic spot, I think. I assume it's iconic because we kept seeing people in long lines. It was like a long line. Let me go back to it. It's called Al Ancio in Tone in, in Tokyo. Ooh. All an I'm sorry y'all. I cannot pronounce it. So I'ma just show you guys. So this was the name of the place. Al en Antico. Al Antico Finacio. I gotta work on my Italian, y'all. I just assumed it was good because every time we would walk past past it, there would be like a long line wrapped around the street. So I just had to get it. So I really don't even know what I ordered, okay? Uh, I don't know. And when I looked at the menu, I was just like, um, numero four. But this is what I got. I know it has like truffle sauce on it. And a lot of, I've seen a lot of Italian shops they have like the panini sandwiches. I guess that's like, a grab and go thing that they eat here. Let me bite it. It is good. It's good. Even though I don't know what's on it, it's good. Oh my god. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Bye guys.